an emotional night. Uh, one of the most beloved shows in recent television history. Blackish has packed up and is leaving us. So after eight seasons, the Johnson family's moved out of Sherman Oaks. Uh, the cast is here to talk about it tonight. Eight seasons is a big deal. Most shows at ABC don't last eight episodes. Blackish <laughs> has been on so long that it was the subject of an angry tweet by a then private citizen named Donald Trump, who back in 2014 <laughs> tweeted, How is ABC television allowed to have a show entitled Blackish? Can you imagine the furor of a show whitish? Racism <laughs> at highest level. Yeah. You being elected president was racism at highest level. This was a television show. But that's the kind of straight shooting common sense that got the men of the White House, you know. <laughs> In Florida yesterday, a federal judge struck down the mask mandate in place for passengers on airplanes, trains, and buses, which is uh, good news for the little bags of pretzels industry. But the judge who <laughs> struck it down is Katherine Kimball Mazel, uh, pictured here. Uh, it's amazing that a woman with an entire tablecloth around her neck gets to tell us <laughs> whether to wear masks or she's like, dressed like a Nissan in a Christmas commercial. <laughs> Governor Ron DeSantis, of course, praised the decision. He tweeted, it was great to see a federal judge in Florida follow law and reject the Biden transportation mask mandate, or as he calls it, critical face theory. All the major <laughs> airlines have already updated their policy. Uh, Delta, American, United, Southwest, JetBlue, Frontier, and Spirit announced they'll no longer require passengers to wear masks. Well, Spirit Airlines actually didn't have an official mask requirement because um, they don't have windows in the plane. So that's... <laughs> So the remaining airlines are expected to follow suit, which means it's time to say goodbye to the viral videos of Karens and Aarons having anti-mask meltdowns in midair. And it's, now it's time to recognize the very best of the very worst in the first ever Unruly Awards. That's right. The Unruly for outstanding dramatic mask removal goes. You're talking to me like that, for Take me off. I don't give a. I didn't even want to go to Cali. I didn't even want to go to Cali. I didn't even want to go to Cali. You didn't even want to go. The winner for outstanding use of expletives is... You made me wait four hours for this flight. Do you understand that? You made me wait four hours. You gave me one warning. One warning. That's it. Outstanding white woman comparing herself to Rosa Parks. It probably didn't make sense for Rosa either. It probably didn't make sense. Outstanding use of a substitute mask. <laughs> Outstanding use of packing materials. <laughs> and finally, outstanding nonverbal protest. We'll be, um, each of them will be getting rabies shots, so. And <laughs> by the way, it's not just the airplanes. Uber and Lyft have also dropped the mask requirement for passengers, but the drivers will um, still wear so much cologne you'll want to wear the mask anyway. <laughs> so now the big question is, if you're in a situation where you have to be extra careful not to get COVID, um, but for whatever reason you have to travel, what do you do? With mask mandates ending around the country, we know that many Americans are looking for a safer way to travel. A tried and true mode of transportation that promises you a good, clean ride. The Railroad Handcar. Railroad Handcars are open air vehicles that are COVID safe and a pretty sick tricep workout. Travel the country the way folks did in silent movies or old cartoons, pumping your arms for days on end as you slowly trudge along miles of the abandoned American wasteland. The Railroad Handcar, not just for people escaping from chain gangs anymore. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Seems like he would be into that. That's... So, um, you know how back in August, Trump and his team of wishful thinkers were working on a plan to somehow get him back into the White House? Well, according to the New York Times, they're still trying. They're still trying to overturn the election. Trump and a group, including Mr. My Pillow, Mike Lindell, believe that... 
by decertifying the vote in key states, the outcome of the 2020 election can still be reversed. Michael, what is it gonna take for him to get over this? Does the McRib have to come back? I mean, really, <laughs> you lost. America's just not that into you. They think, I think they think if they complain long enough, eventually they'll get their way. This is the presidency. This is not the Snyder Cut of Justice League. You're not gonna get your way. In fact, take a lesson from this guy. Um, see if you recognize this man. He lost uh, the mayoral race in New York to David Dinkins many years ago. And this is how you graciously concede. We had a hard fought campaign. And now, in the highest tradition of our democracy, we will work together with all our might to build a great city here in New York. We love New York, don't we? All right. And we're going to unify behind the mayor of New York, aren't we? Yes! Because that's the democratic process, and we believe in it, don't we? All right. That's right, Rudy Giuliani. That's... <laughs> Well, I don't know what happened, but something happened. The vamp, maybe the shoe polish got in his brain. I don't know. <laughs> Trump's other hopeless endeavor is his uh, top shelf social media platform, Truth Social, which um, has been, to use one of his favorite phrases, a total disaster since it launched. In February, they had a massive outage yesterday. It was down all morning. All dozens of their users were affected by it. So the CEO of Truth Social is Devin Nunes, the former congressman. He attempted to put a spin on his incompetence. He posted this message once, once the site came back up. As many of you know, our team has been working nonstop to ensure that truth cannot be shut down by tech tyrants, which means he probably forgot to pay the electric bill. But <laughs> and why would tyrants try to shut down a service that barely works as? In order to shut something down, it has to be up. But look at, go back to that, because even Devin's avatar looks scared. <laughs> like he's worried Trump's coming back from the golf course to fire him or something. According to the New York Times, Trump's spending a lot of his days now having his ass kissed by candidates looking for endorsements in their races. And before they come to pitch, they're instructed to bring colorful printouts with compelling visual material, which is a Nice way of saying, don't show up without a penthouse. <laughs> Congressman Billy Long of Missouri said, when you're presenting to Trump, uh, there is no secret sauce. Uh, that was a quote. And that's because if there was secret sauce, Trump would eat your presentation. But <laughs> strategists say to get Trump's endorsement, big fonts are crucial. You must show compelling visual material and use color photos. It's the same advice you'd give on how to communicate with a gorilla. Try shaking your keys, that'll get his attention. <laughs> the Dalai Lama also weighed in on the war on Ukraine yesterday. Of course, he says it never would have happened on his watch, which is interesting because there's a clip making the rounds now from 2019 when our master diplomat was hard at work offering President Zelensky some very helpful advice. I hope that you and President Putin get together and can solve your problem. That would be a tremendous achievement. And I know you're trying to do that. <laughs> We're going to cue up the Curb Your Enthusiasm music, but it felt inappropriate. <laughs> Meanwhile, even in times of horror, Ukrainians and Ukrainian Americans somehow managed to keep their senses of humor and defiance. One clever rebel projected the Ukrainian flag onto the Russian embassy in D.C., much the display of a Russia-friendly spotlight operator who tried to block it. He, yeah, he tried to get on top of it to blur it out, I guess, but... <laughs> like, moving around Pac-Man style. <laughs> like a Looney Tunes cartoon or something. Uh, nope. Well, if that isn't a metaphor for what's going on over there, I don't know what is. Small victories, though, right? I mean, meanwhile, President Biden's reportedly planning to run for re-election. He is said to have shared this plan with his former boss, Barack Obama, when Obama was at the White House. If elected, Biden would be 82 at the beginning of his second term. He'd be the oldest sitting president. He'd also be the first president to, who gets his exercise walking around an empty mall in the morning. Um, <laughs> I would imagine that conversation might have put Obama in kind of a tough spot. It's like when a woman tells her friend she's planning to get bangs, it's the, kind of the friend's job to say, are you sure about that? That's, 
I wonder if now that he's out of office, Obama's back to smoking weed. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, yeah, Maybe, right? Yeah. You know, researchers from Cornell, they did a big study. They said over an eight-year span, people who live in states that legalize marijuana have a lower demand for prescription drugs, which makes sense, because who needs drugs when you're on, already on drugs? But <laughs> it also explains why I've never seen Cheech or Chong at a CVS here in LA. But... <laughs> Research has found that uh, while cases of COVID are going up in major cities, hospitalization rates are going down. Hopefully that means COVID's headed toward becoming a milder uh, illness that we get every once in a while. We've come a long way since the start of the pandemic. So every now and then we like to look back to remember life during lockdown. And we're doing it again tonight in an April edition of This Month in COVID History. This month in COVID history. Travel back. Physical distance. Happy birthday. It's like a miracle. It will disappear. To April 2021. Hollyweird is back on track. It's the Oscars. In a train station. Glenn Close shakes her caboose. Surely the craziest thing that will ever happen at the Oscars. And now for some good news. We're all vaccinated. A large portion of Americans say they will not get vaccinated. Oh, no. What shall we do? Detroit is paying drivers $50 for each person that they bring to a vaccination site. People can get a free Jello shot if they've had their COVID vaccine. Activists staged a Joints for Jabs campaign, giving anyone who'd been inoculated free weed. Get a poke and take a toke. Look, it's Peppy Bigfoot. The smears against me range from distortions of my personal life to wild, and I mean wild, conspiracy theories. Care to clarify, creepy? Gates sent two Venmo transactions to his friend Joel Greenberg, an accused sex offender. Greenberg used the same app to send three young women the same amount. Worst promposal ever. <laughs> Grandpa's on the horn. Starting today. Yes. If you're fully vaccinated. Check. And you're outdoors. Go on. You need, and not in a big crowd. Hurry it up. You no longer need to wear a mask. Hooray! Burn those filthy life-saving masks. Or face the consequences. Your response when you see children wearing masks as they play should be no different from your response to seeing someone beat a kid in Walmart. Contact Child Protective Services. Keep calling until someone arrives. And if the person who arrives at the playground is Matt Gates, run like hell. <laughs> this has been this month in COVID history. Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.